Rock Bottom Coins are the number one place to get your Madden coins. If you make coins for my videos, sell them to Rock Bottom. If you're buying, use my code GUTBOX for 10% off. Hey, Box here. So, today we're going to talk about the best abilities in Mott. We're going to go through a tier list. I spent quite a while kind of maneuvering it around. I'm not sure I'm 100% on it, but uh, I put enough hours into it already. Um, obviously, <clears throat> we don't have every ability available right now. So some of them also has to be factored into the account that they're on their way and they're not quite done. We also have Mutt Leaks out here leaking future abilities to us um, that aren't in the game yet, to my knowledge, anywhere. Um, uh, and, and these things, uh, it's hard to rate them, but most of them, with the exception of a couple, look like abilities that are already in the game just combined. Like, for example, Interior Threat basically looks like Edge Threat. Um, I, you guys see my... I don't know if you guys are seeing my uh, curse or not, but Interior Threat, the third one... Um, just looks like edge threat from the interior third down threat looks new but otherwise a lot of these things are just a couple of them combined so they're gonna basically be uh, very similar to other abilities that are two abilities combined but let's go ahead and get to the tier list here's the Madden 24 tier list but you know it's the same I, I got Madden 23 Madden 22 right here so it is funny a skateboardist was so good on S tier that it uh, ended up becoming an X factor because it was too overpowered so it's interesting to see how things change year over year. Um, I got more in the S tier right now. And, and I will say, overall, outside of like these three, I think generally at, like uh, the abilities have either stayed the same or gotten a lot weaker. Right? They're, they're not as overpowered as previous years, which is a major W. Well, there's other ones. right? Film study is overpowered and shouldn't be in the game. Literally, like you shouldn't be able to build battle check your opponents. Um, I haven't used a lot of the uh, one steps yet either, so man coverage is meta, which is why they're there. But let's go ahead and go through some of the abilities and why I think they're there, um, and and what you should really look for on your your players right now, both in franchise and in mutt, to add them. Right. So uh, for those that have played the game, it is a man meta. Man is very powerful, especially if you have speed and high man coverage. Right. You know, press man is also incredibly powerful as long as again you have decent press uh, on your on your cards. Right. You can't just go out there and use Deion Sanders as a cornerback because he's got low press if you want to run that kind of style. I have him at free safety, so that way if I have a cross man or a man, I'm up at safety. Um, I don't have to worry about the press coming into effect if I do want to play press man. Um, I've been rotating through some guys there playing press man for me. So, anyways, so stuff like route technician is an S tier. So even though I haven't used it in Mutt, it's going to be S tier for me just so I can get a, 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 a better break and, and beat man coverage more consistently. Because like that's the thing about man coverage is it's very inconsistent this year. It's inconsistently great. It's not inconsistently bad, right? Like you're either going to beat the guy on a zig, which is like stock, and you'll beat him by like a yard or two, or you'll lose and he'll just have your lunch, right? He'll literally just beat you up and take you and put you in a locker. Um, so like there's no like major losses on these things unless you have like super low man coverage, okay? So, that's kind of it. Man coverage is inconsistently great from route to route and, and play to play. So, route technician hopefully will provide a little bit more consistency at beating some of these routes out there. Um, but let's go ahead. Uh, I think jukebox and for, for evasive, which is jukebox and spin cycle con uh, combined. Jukebox is the best I've seen jukes since Madden 20. It's insane. You literally will put people into animations. Madden 20... You know, animation based. Madden 18 was the last time I saw like you'd be able to bet, juke out six guys at once. So, really, like Madden 20 was just for the movement's sake, but jukebox itself, the ability is probably the best I've seen it since Madden 18. Um, Hot route master should really just be stock on all quarterbacks, but it's got to be S tier because of the great routes, the posts and corners that you can make out of it are not able to be made in any other thing. Um, and, and hot route master, the reason slot apprentice, wide receiver, tight end apprentice, outside backfield master, route apprentice. They're basically all right into this one, which is why they're A tier. Even though they're very powerful, they're A tier. High route master and your quarterbacks, everything combined. So that's S tier for me. Although backfield master does also beat linebackers a lot quicker. So nobody runs linebackers though. So whatever. Slotomatic, I put that right there at A tier uh, instead of uh, route tech because it only works in the slot. It's okay i think it's okay i think uh, but route technician working all over the field and any route is much better um a lot of people are going to be asking me about short in short in got downgraded to d tier same with short out because it no longer does what it does in madden 23 so if you look at like madden 23 abilities um short in elite was right here and i think i, I did this 
If I had to redo this at the end of the year, short out elite would probably be S tier. Although I didn't see a ton of of press man um, last year. Short out elite because of short out elite, it destroyed press man. Um, the reason why short out elite is there last year is that it beat press man off the off the rip on like outside receivers. So you just run streaks and they actually win. This year that doesn't happen. They nerfed short in and short out, so our ability to beat man has been nerfed on the offensive side of the ball. For some reason, EA just wants to continually feed a man meta. I don't know, but almost every single change they've had over the last few years has been making man stronger. I think it's because it's more pay to win. Um, it's like literally all I have to do is set your defense and they'll just play the game for you on a man meta. So that's my best guess for why they keep making man coverage super powerful. Um... Threat detector is up here in S tier. Getting up, getting information about your opponent's defenses is invaluable. Um, I, it just it shouldn't be in the game. Threat detector and film study. The thing about threat detector and why it's like S tier, maybe not as powerful as threat study, is because they can go like three, three, five wide and neutralize it a little bit. So it sucks that it kind of forces us out of a lot of defenses for threat detector. Um, in my opinion, it just like those things. Same with Omaha. Literally shouldn't be in the game as far as X factors. Fearless. Under pressure and accurates are stupid. I've seen so many quarterbacks as they're like, you know, the guys barreling in are still dominating and throwing the ball correctly, but uh, under pressure. So gift wrap, I like, I want to like say like you don't need gift wrap, but it provides a slight bonus to catching the ball that I'm just going to say use it. Uh, there's no other great quarterback abilities right now outside of gunslinger and like obviously some dead eyes and stuff, but um, I... I I don't know. It's one AP, and obviously, I you know I'm just experimenting with other one AP abilities. They're not that good, uh, so I just threw it on Najee. And whatever balance beam was stupid, but gift wrap. I, I think you want to have that on your quarterbacks. You don't need it, but I think it does help a little bit. So if you're a passer, just just find the one AP somehow um, and use gift wrapped. Roaming dead eye. It's kind of still like glitched. Escape out the pocket. Let go of the right triggers you're throwing, and it's like perfect accuracy. So. It's, it's really good uh, for mobile quarterbacks. Gunslinger, I talked about. Quicker throw motion. It's not as powerful as set feet lead and pass lead lead because those things increase the velocity of the ball. Like, zone coverage will literally be dead. Not, like, dead dead, but it'll be significantly nerfed as soon as we get set feet lead and pass lead elite on our quarterbacks in mud. If you have the ability to put these things on a quarterback and franchise, you 100% add this before any other ability. These things are, like, it, they're just... The defenders, like, just don't react that well. Like, they already don't react. Zone coverage already, like, you know, matriculates to their spot on the field very slowly, especially corner routes. But, like, the ability to just basically fit in every single tight window in the game just becomes so much easier with these two abilities because um, zone coverage is so bad. And there's, like, no knockouts this year, basically, especially if you, like, gift-wrapped and matchup nightmare. Some people swear by matchup nightmare. I've seen a little bit of it um, uh, dominate me. Somebody just seam-shotted me an entire game once or just about an entire game. And it was very hard to deal with it. This tight end said matchup nightmare on it, and I just couldn't knock it out. Even though when I throw the matchup nightmare, guys, it just bounced off their hands. So I don't know. I, they they didn't have gift wrapped and matchup nightmare at the same time. So maybe that's the stack you guys want to run. Playmaker like, again, it's okay against man, but it just destroys zone, right? Like your, your your zone defenders are essentially cones out there. Unlike in the real NFL, where zone defenders will match and it'll be more intelligence to guys around them. You basically outside of Steelers linebackers, of course. Um, being able to flick it and immediately responds. It like screws up users. It screws up zones. The only saving grace is that man coverage kind of plays it better than it used to. Uh, where it was overpowered as heck. And like, I feel like that was 18 ish era, 17 ish, where Playmaker was everywhere and destroying all of our uh, uh, coverages. The apprentices we talked about, Slotomatic, um, Identifier. The more information, the better. It's an A tier for me. If you have two AP that you don't need, throw it on identifier, and then your opponent really can't surprise you. Now, a lot of opponents will just be, it, like, they'll just stick on one player the whole game, right? Those opponents, identifier basically does nothing about. But some opponents will shift, right? They'll, like, use their, their CB or, like, they'll jump on their D line for a rep to try and surprise you. And having that ability to see where your opponent is taking away, Right, so, and, and seeing what's user linebacker they're on the right side or left side is very important because it allows you to attack differently and know what's is going to be covered essentially ba based off uh, where they are. So information is king in a game where like people baseline to give you as little information as possible. Long range dead eye, 
similar to roaming that I um, uh, throw in the ball uh, with perfect accuracy. I think it was more important uh, a few weeks ago before we had our, our quarterbacks now that can actually pass the ball effectively like Terry Bradshaw and some of the higher accuracy dudes. So that is what it is, but long range dead eye for those deep passes being perfectly on target is really nice. RB Apprentice, very similar. They're just apprentices. I, I like the extra ability uh, routes that I have. Mid and elite, I throw a lot of post patterns. Um, and post patterns are generally thrown into coverage. So mid and elite actually helping with the catching. I know some people said it helps on route breaks. I haven't really seen that as much, but uh, mid and elite, I put it in A tier. Just because I use it, I'm like, you know what? And, I, you know, actually, I kind of like hanging on to those balls. It's not, you know, you can't high point and hang on to them. I've dropped a ball, uh, mid and elite's lit up, and it was a high point, and you dropped it. So it's not like everything is going to work your way from mid in, but I like it enough to put it in A tier as my only, you know, in or out elite ability. Deep out elite, I feel like it's too inconsistent this year. Some of you may well to prove me wrong um, as far as the uh, catching abilities on it. Otherwise, a lot of these things are very uh, scheme dependent. Honorary lineman's great for a runner, useless for a passer. Great for a runner. Same with nasty streak. If you pull guards, if you pull guards in some sort of power scheme and some sort of like, you know, screen scheme. Like I really like um, screen protector, but screens like the problem with screen protector is it's really good when they connect. The issue is your your running back sometimes runs in the line. It kind of gets messed up. Users will take a look, and they'll be able to track your screens. Sometimes the D-line just plays well enough to shut down your screen. Um, but I didn't, I didn't, I couldn't, even though it's really effective when it works, it's too inconsistent to really, like, utilize as a main portion of your scheme. Like, jukeboxes every play. The ball's in your guys' hands, and you're making ankles break. Okay? So that's what they're doing, like, an S tier and C tier, even though it's effective. Uh, the ability of it. Armbar, uh, bruiser, bulldozer. Um, I like bruiser because it's combined bulldozer, armbar. I feel like power moves are really good this year for gaining a few extra yards. But, like, you're going to slow down enough with them. That, like, jukebox where you barely slow down, you, you, like, the pursuit can't catch you as fast. Is why uh, jukebox is better, in my opinion. You can beat more people with jukebox. You can't really bruiser through a few people unless, like, animation problems hit, hit your opponent. Um, so that's kind of, I'm not going to go through too much of them. Human joystick, I want to point out, if you're on old gen, is S tier. Human joystick, still insane on old gen to my knowledge. But on next gen, it's not really effective. It's okay, I think. Uh, not with it. Leapfrog, for journalers, they like it. But you can still fumble a little bit with leapfrog. But journaling is so unrealistic, it shouldn't be in the game with the way it's, way it's done right now. Defense, these are all, uh, outside of film study, which shouldn't be in the game, all uh, man abilities. All man abilities and then bench press down here is also man ability. The only ones that aren't man abilities here are under pressure from your D line to cause random inaccuracies. Dumb. So you basically, like later on in the game, when a lot of people are going to be running under pressures or uh, edge threat elite, which has under, thresh, under pressure built in, you're going to be wanting running fearless, which is why fearless got S tier. Uh, but that that's like a meta call. I think right now running fearless would be a good idea because even, even uh, without people with under pressure on, it's still happening. Inside stuff. We don't have any in Mutt yet, but it's it's pretty nice um, to help stop the inside run, seeing as powerful. Like, the run is in extremely good in Madden 24. The thing is, the run is not good at, like, all Madden difficulty because the enhanced AI. If you if you do the run twice in all Madden difficulty, it's not going to work anymore because of how well the, the, the players respond and, and shed their blocks. So inside stuff is helpful on like all pro and against rpos if like an, the problem with rpos is like their rpo stretches there's not a whole lot of rpo dives you know there's rpo a ton of rpo glitches in the game right now because ea is bad at coding but inside stuff will help you at least a little bit on those uh, all pro um spammers of uh like this rpo bubble sorry rpo bubble that will really help on the rpo bubble guys uh tackle supreme just basically is a counter to jukebox dudes and the thing is, like, the long juke is still going to probably beat the Tackle Supremes, but at least for short jukes, you can take them down. And it's got Secure Tackle built in, so you won't get your stuff broken either. And then Bench Press, like I talked about, Press Man is, is really good in Bench Press. If you guys remember Madden 21 when Bench Press was meta, it was probably one of the worst metas I've ever seen in my life. Lurker on linebackers only. Lurker on DBs. I would not waste your AP on it. It's it's stupid. But on linebackers, you need them. You need it to jump. Pick artists at A tier. I almost... Uh... I moved it down to A tier because it will drop the ball. As as a CPU player, it will drop the ball. But on a user, it's 
I, I'm going to put it up to S tier. Uh, I, I just think I have too many drops without it. I'm moving that up. Yeah. yeah like, so it's like user versus CPU. User, you absolutely 100% want pick artist. On a CPU, it helps a bit. Uh, but I've still seen balls being dropped by my pick artist CPU players. All right. Deep out, mid zone KO. They're not as consistent, but it's nice to have that opportunity uh, to knock the ball out. I would say maybe mid zone goes down one, but I'm just going to leave it where it's at. Mid zone KO. I think deep out zone KO. It'll be nice. We'll see how it deals with corner routes. The zone's just so bad dealing with corner routes right now. Acrobat, tip drill, secure tackle, strip specials, unfakeable, out my way. Unfakeable again. It's half of tackle supreme just to try and deal with the guys with jukebox. Um, out my way is is good ish on your corners. Everybody else, I'd say it's mid. I like it on corners to deal with like you know stretches a little bit. Uh, but otherwise, everybody else is kind of whatever. Um, I, I'm sad. The Flannel Crusher and Forcer don't really cause fumbles. Fumbles this year are caused by punching the ball out. So I almost want to. Um, I did try this, and where is it? I can't believe I forgot to move this up. Where is the strip specialist? Oh, yeah, it's right here. It is A. <laughs> I was like, did I forget this? No, I just overlooked it in A tier. Yeah, I did move it up. Uh, strip specialist and stripping the ball is how you, how you cause uh, fumbles this year. I used strip specialist on, I think, Cam Chancellor for a bit before I went to before I went back to pick artist on my user. Uh, and just running up to somebody, uh, hitting R1 or holding R1 and getting the knockout. It's just, it's just so powerful causing fumbles like that. It's just sad that, like, the Ray Lewis of the world, um, it, it just doesn't really matter these things it's 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 too bad how the game is so slanted towards stripping instead of hitting um defensive rally is really only useful with double or nothings and double or nothings not as effective this year neither is edge threat or edge threat elite um edge threat elites here because of under pressure but i would assume it's going to cost a lot more so that's why i put it at b tier because i'm assuming it's a little bit more plus edge threat's nice but it's not that good. They kind of nerfed it. Maybe it'll be patched. Stonewall, no outsiders. No outsiders. You'd think it'd be great in a stretch meta, but the problem with the stretch meta is the edges are so animation based on like getting there that no outsiders doesn't really get that win because by the time it wins, the animation takes so long, the running back's already running past them a lot of the time. So that's where it is. El Toro's good on a user, but then you gotta be using the D line, but it's nice for a little sneaky thing. Um reach a lead i didn't like when i used it some people swear by d-line abilities like unpredictable speedster um where's the other one yeah ripper swim club i didn't notice it when i tried it but maybe i'm missing things maybe i'm missing things um and that's all i gotta say about on the ball is only good for like if you play man coverage and you're playing a runner and especially if the runner has a uh, runoff elite Runoff Elite for a running scheme against a man coverage guy is is crazy powerful. Uh, but guys might just switch to zone at that point, and then it's a useless ability. So, there you go. That's my take on ability tier list. Let me know where you guys think are different, if I screwed up anywhere. Um, and I, I guess I'm excited to try out whatever new, uh, whatever new shenanigans come with the, with the new ones. All right, bye.